Kell Brook versus Errol Spence. These are my keys to victory. Now for the champion, Kell Brook, he needs to keep the fight at long range. For my money, he's the better long range boxer. He's sharper. His punches have a bit more velocity on them. They're thrown straighter. And in my opinion, he also has a better jab than Errol Spence. He's also a better counter puncher, in my opinion, at long range than Errol Spence. So Brook really needs to keep the fight on the outside. That's where, her, where his advantage is. He needs to line up Errol Spence, because Spence does tend to square his shoulders up from time to time. He needs to line him up for that straight right hand or his chocolate brownie, as he calls it, down the pipe. He needs to stay off the ropes. He needs to keep turning Errol Spence and not allow Errol Spence to push him back in straight lines. And when the fight does inevitably get on the inside, he needs to tie Errol Spence up. Now, he's going to have to be careful when it comes to the referee, although it is in Kell Brook's hometown, so the referee might be a bit more lenient on him, but he's going to have to be careful in terms of excessive holding, not getting points deducted, etc. But he cannot engage Errol Spence on the inside. Kell Brook is not an inside fighter. He's not good at fighting on the inside. Errol Spence is exceptionally good at fighting on the inside. So you do not want to engage him. You want to nullify him, spin away, punish Errol Spence at long range and keep it moving. And Kell Brook is also not a guy who tends to throw a lot of body punches himself. Perhaps it might be an idea at some stage to employ some body shots, even if he's only throwing jabs to the body if he can get that shot off against the south pole, which is a bit of an awkward angle to throw jabs, but maybe he could throw some right hands to the body. If he can slow Errol Spence's attack down, then that will benefit him, particularly down the stretch, where Kell Brook potentially could be maybe a little gassed because of the amount of weight he's had to take off. So level the playing field by getting Errol Spence tired with some body shots slow down his attack later on in the fight so it'll be easier for Kell Brook in those later rounds. So those are my keys to victory for the champion Kell Brook. As I say, stick to the straight shots, long range, stay off the ropes, maybe go to Errol Spence's body. Now the keys to victory for Errol Spence are obviously <laughs> almost the exact opposite of those. I would say for Errol Spence, don't stay at long range for too long. Errol Spence can box at long range. He's competent. But his advantage, particularly against a sharpshooter like Kell Brook, who lacks an inside game, is going to be to get close and work the body. And it might be a case of Errol Spence actually having to ignore the head early in the fight because Kell Brook is so sharp at long range. Because I think he's going to be extra spiteful in this fight. He's going to be extra sharp because of the fact that he's got the bit between his teeth. He's been made the underdog. He resents that. His fans resent that. I think he's going to be extra sharp and spiteful in the early rounds. So Errol Spence may want to concentrate on defense at long range, not really throw too, too much. I know there's a, there's a risk that he could fall behind on the scorecards, but that's the situation when you fight away from home against the champion. You, you're not really going to get any favors when it comes to the scorecard. So I think he should make sure that he is in the middle of the ring, either boxing with Brooke or going forward. He should not allow Brooke to push him back. I think that would be a mistake. Unless Earl Spence has got some type of, you know, tools or tricks in his arsenal, which I've not seen yet, then I would not advise Earl Spence to move back. It's not that Kell Brook is a particularly good come forward fighter. He's not. <clears throat> but still, I think Errol Spence's advantage is in the middle of the ring or coming forward, putting steady pressure on Kell Brook, making sure that he don't take too many of those chocolate brownies, cutting the ring off, putting mental pressure on Brook, making Brook work harder than he wants to work. And, you know, keeping that tight defense. And then when he gets into position, start banging those body shots in. Errol Spence, for my money, is the best body puncher in boxing right now. And he has to show that in this fight, particularly against the guy who is potentially weight drained. The body shots could prove absolutely crucial and lethal. So that's what Errol Spence has to concentrate on, particularly early on in the fight. Once Kell Brook has tasted a few of those body shots and it's slowed down his pace a little bit, then Errol Spence can really start to crank it up and start throwing headshots to go with those body shots. And that's pretty much what Errol Spence has done in most of his fights. If you watch Errol Spence fight, he tends to start fairly cagey and he gradually, gradually, gradually cranks up the tempo, starts firing at a higher and higher pace as the fight goes on, particularly towards the middle rounds. It's the body shots which allow him to do that because they slow his opponent's movement down 
and they make the opponent more stationary. He starts trapping them on the ropes. He starts letting go with the body shots and the headshots. So that's what he has to do with Kell Brook. But as I say, keep a tight defense because Kell Brook is, in my view, sharper and better at long range than Errol Spence is. So it's going to be a fascinating fight. Errol Spence needs to be the stalker. It's almost like a matador and a bull in a certain sense, although Errol Spence is not the reckless bull that Sean Porter was. Errol Spence is far more calculated, far more accurate, taller, longer, you know, uh, longer arms, and um, just the all more, you know, all round more accurate fighter than Sean Porter. So yeah, it's going to be a good fight. Those are my keys to victory. Maybe you have some other keys which I've missed out. If you do, drop it in the comment section below. Let me know how you feel this fight is going to go. Let me know what you think both fighters need to do to achieve victory in this fight. Perhaps you think Kell Brook should go forward, all guns blazing. Perhaps you think Errol Spence should box on the back foot, Pernell Whitaker style. How do you think this fight should be fought by both men? What will give them an advantage? What will give them the best chances of winning? Drop it all in the comment section below. It's happening, I'm out.